Hello everyone, welcome to this CUBE conversation here in Palo Alto, California. It's the CUBE headquarters, I'm John Furrier, the co-founder of SiliconANGLE Media for a special CUBE conversation with Tammy Zhu, who is the general manager of Kika Tech headquarters in San Jose, uh, friend of the CUBE's I've known Tammy since almost 15 years, because in the Web 2.0 era, um, dual degree in computer science, undergraduate and a master's as well as an MBA from MIT Sloan. Uh, great to see you. Thanks, John, for having me here. Great to see you. So we've, we've kind of went through the Web 2.0 wars. Yes. Together. I think you were at AOL Ventures then and a variety of other careers. Um, you've been in the trenches, certainly in the front lines uh, in tech, yeah. and uh, you've seen a lot of waves. And so where are you now? Give us an update on what you're doing now. A lot of, a lot of great things happening. Yes, since uh, we last saw each other 15 years ago, uh, most recently I joined a company called Kika Tech and uh, we're headquartered in San Jose. And matter of fact, the reason the company recruited me to join the company is for two things. One is to develop our AI effort and product. And secondly, is to really move the headquarters from China to San Jose, because large percentage of, his, of our consumers are US based. Yeah, we love the China connection. We've been um, covering China recently for SiliconANGLE and theCUBE. Yeah. We're just in Hangzhou for Alibaba, but this really speaks to the, I won't say the, the Chinese invasion of the North America, that's certainly happening, but also the rest of the world is going to China. And, you know, tons of users out there, exploding with mobile usage, really setting the trends. So the globalization of the internet's happening yeah. um, and the software on mobile is just getting better and better. You're doing some AI work with Kika. What you, what is, what's going on with AI and Kika? Because you guys have spectacular performance, 400 yeah. million downloads. What is it all about? What is the big trend that you're riding? Yeah, so the mission of Kika is to revolutionize communication with AI. So if you were to look at the purposes of human communication, right? We categorize into three categories. Number one is about sharing information, and number two is about initiating requests and having your request fulfilled. And number three is about sharing your emotion. And a lot of companies out there are addressing one of the three challenges and purposes. Whereas at Kika, we're taking on the challenges of addressing all three purposes in communication. Well, congratulations on all your success as general manager and, and, and expanding out in, uh, in North America here from the Chinese-based uh, company. Uh, we've got a big uh, challenge ahead of you. But I got to ask you on a personal level, yep. you know, I've always seen you in a male-dominated culture, you know, in the, in the Web 2.0 era, you've been very successful uh, as a woman in tech. And uh, what got you into technology? Because, you know, you're, you're kind of a, a nerd like me, and, you know, you get in there, you love to get in and look at the technology. You're not afraid to get your hands dirty in the tech. Thanks. How did you get into the to the technology yeah. business. I'm probably nerdier than you <laughs> <laughs> as a starter. And uh, so I grew up in, you know, a very uh, academia, academia family. My parents are both engineering professors and they encouraged me to excel in academic uh, you know, at school. So I, I was very competitive, always wanted to be number one and always number one, matter of fact, throughout the entire school academic uh, career. And uh, when, my, when, when I was 12 years old, my dad was a visiting professor here in the United States. And he told me a lot about Stanford and the Silicon Valley. And at that time, I decided I was going to come to the Silicon Valley when I grew up and participate in technological innovation. I just thought that was so cool. And you did. Yes, absolutely. That's, this is something that I'm passionate about yeah. and I love to do. You're certainly an inspiration. I've always enjoyed um, the work you've done and just the, the energy you bring uh, to the table, and this is something that we need more of. I mean, you're out there. What do you, what do you say to people? You say, hey, I've been around the block a few times, and there's a lot of people trying to figure out the whole, you know, women in tech thing. There's been such negative things going on in the business. You're a positive light. What would you like to share for folks around, just your thoughts on this whole, yeah. you know, women in tech, should they be special, the pipelining issue, all these, all these conversations. What's your perspective? How would you? Take, right. take a perspective. And I'd say we you know, take advantage of our individual strength. And uh, you know, a number of things I continue to emphasize to my colleagues at work, right? Number one is every day you check in and ask yourself, do I love this work? Is this something I'm passionate about? If you are, it's more likely you're going to be successful in this with some perseverance, right? And the second thing is that I emphasize is uh, don't be afraid of experimenting. and 
try to make mistakes. That's okay, completely okay. And try to make mistakes early mm -hmm. and frequent. As long as you don't make the same mistakes again and learn from that. Uh, the third thing I continue to emphasize, as a matter of fact, I lead by example, is never procrastinate. We have dreams and hopes, and we talk about that. That's great, but we need to execute on that now. I love your competitive spirit. Uh, again, I think you're an inspiration. But you also, you said you like to be number one, and you were in school, and, and I think we, you might be a little bit nerdy, but we can talk about that <laughs> after. Um, when you're number one, you're going fast, you're moving fast, and you're learning, you're not going to go without a few interactions that are unfavorable. Um, so how do you uh, talk to other women uh, when you're out in the field? Because you know, when you're hard charging like that and you're smart, you got to deal with a lot of bad actors. How, how, and it could be men, it could be harassment, it could be sexual, whatever it is, you know, you, you, you got to break through that. If you want to be number one, you got to deal with this. And I've talked sure. to a lot of women saying, look, I've had my share, fair, fair share of, of interactions that were unpleasant, but I moved past it. What, how do you deal with it? I'm sure you have stories and, and could share a perspective on, on how you deal with right. unwanted advances to just bad behavior. Right, um, I think I'm luckier probably than some of the uh, um, average population in that I've not really dealt with much of a, you know, too bad of a behavior. Yeah. But certain behaviors, uh, I'd say, uh, look beyond, way beyond that, don't play the same game. Mm -hmm. Don't play the game at all. Don't entertain any of the bad behaviors. Believe in yourself and perseverance will get you far and apart uh, and never give up. Awesome, and then the, on the inspiration side, how do you inspire other women? Because I think this, I'm seeing some really good things happening. One thing is you're seeing a lot of conversations and a lot of people coming together. Um, and a lot of young women are looking up for leaders and looking to folks who have been through, have been, that are climbing the mountain, they're close to the top or at the top. And so you have this new really cool vibe going on where the women are coming together at all ages for sharing. How do you do it? Yeah, so matter of fact, compared to 15 years ago, right, when we met when during Web 2.0, I think there were a lot fewer women in tech. And nowadays, uh, you know, with new generation of technology, social media, you actually start seeing women in computer science and taking the lead, right? As a matter of fact, just taking the time and be patient. Mm -hmm. um, and also, uh, I think one, one of the things, you know, as human being, right, we often worry about compensation, mm -hmm. how much, you know, we're being paid now, how much we're yeah. worth, and what exactly the title is, right? I'd say don't even worry about that. Focus on what you're passionate about. Yeah. And um, it will take some time, yeah. and be patient, and we'll get there. Yeah, we always say respect for the individual, but just be a good person, you know, and just don't deal with the nonsense, move past it, and uh, don't play the games. All right, I gotta get in, now get back into the tech, since yeah. um, we're, uh, we're gonna geek out here. So AI, I think, is the hottest thing in the planet right now, obviously. IOT is super important. We cover it heavily with Wikibon yeah. Silicon Angle on the Cube. But no one wakes up in the morning and says, I can't wait to talk about IOT with my friends. They talk about AI, because AI's right. got a cooler vibe to it. But we're talking about software. We're talking about really cool software and a renaissance of software development. So, you know, AI is super hot. You guys are doing a lot of AI Kika. What is the coolness, both for any male and female or anyone to get involved, what is the hot AI trend? Is it the machine learning, the deep learning? Is right. it the user experience? Is it making it easier? What are some of the advances that you're excited about in AI? Right, so depending on the time, uh, timing, right, and the years. So say uh, 15 years ago, or 20 years ago, let's say 20 years ago, right, at the time, AI actually, there was a small boom, but very quickly went into a ice age. Right, cold winter. And matter of fact, during that time, uh, I was in undergrad, and my uh, undergrad thesis was natural language processing in Chinese mm -hmm. languages. Mm -hmm. But uh, with that, you know, expert system at that time, the framework, it never got anywhere because um, it really limited because of the knowledge from experts. Right. Mm -hmm. um, so now, uh, fast forward to two, three years ago, when Amazon Echo first launch, mm -hmm. right? I think there were a lot of doubt in that, hey, you know, in academia and among the people in the industry, they were thinking, well, this is pretty cynical, saying, well, this is yet another, mm -hmm. you know, boom. I doubt that, right? But Echo really paved the way and brought artificial intelligence into the homes yeah. of consumers, 
right? And then two, three years ago, I think it was very cutting edge in terms of voice recognition. Yeah. And you know, you hear a lot about far field, about noise cancellation. But nowadays, the voice uh, recognition is becoming far more mature, yeah. right? So for someone who wants to you know, work on the most cutting edge thing, from my point of view, voice may be a little bit um, to the point where it's you know, mature that people understand the problems, right? Yeah. And um, so this year, only recently, yeah. Apple announced an emoji. So this is the starting point yeah. of computer vision in consumers' lives. Right, so say if I were an engineer, I would want to get into a computer vision because there's so many more things yeah. you could potentially. It's play the next around level UI and interaction. I mean, I mean, I think NLP, natural language processing, has always been kind of fun. I remember back in when I was getting my CS degree, ontologies were big. That kind of stalled the the, win the, the nuclear winter hit there or the cold winter. Yeah. But now with cloud computing, you and mobile being so powerful, you now have so much at your disposal. Yes. And with all these libraries and open source developing, yes. it's a dream for a developer because now you can create new experiences, not the yes. old way, you know, browser or you know, yeah. just typing on a phone. You guys got a really cool app they can download, Kika Technologies. You got huge opportunities to reimagine the interface and the interactions. So I think like AI has put a picture in the mind of the user, the consumer, and the developer. Self-driving cars, Teslas. You know, this is a yeah. new coolness. What are some other examples of this new coolness that you could share that are happening in whether it's computer vision or Teslas or voice interaction? What, where's the action on the coolness? Yeah, so um, I've been very limited in, in, in that. I've been so focused on work. Uh, we have something really cool coming up in 2018. Matter of fact, we're kicking off 2018 with launching a brand new product that taking our existing input method and keyboard, right, into the whole next level in the whole IoT. That's like you're just mentioning. You know, who cares about IoT? But no, IoT <laughs> is the fastest growing area. It's real, but yeah. no, just IoT is AI. It will become an edge yes, of the network. Yes. Now, on this launch, is this going to happen at CES? Yes, we're okay. going to launch at CES. So we'll look, we'll look for the news at CES. Yes. Yes, okay, that's it'll all be you can very say. exciting, <laughs> matter of fact. I'll have to dig some information out of Tammy after this interview's over, find out more. We'll be at CES. Um, okay, final question, just in general, your thoughts on the tech cycle right now. Again, you've ridden many waves. Again, you've seen a lot, of, you know the tech under the covers. What's the big movement that young people should be jumping on? The new renaissance in software development is happening. We see the cloud there. It's clear from Amazon's success yeah. that the new model's here. You're seeing some yeah. successes. What is the how would you describe this new era, this new guard of technology providers and software? Right, so from a talent point of view, right, 10, 15 years ago, if you got PhD in computer science, you could hardly find a job other than finding a professorship somewhere. But nowadays, if you were to look at Facebook, Google, right, as a PhD in computer science, then you are actually worth a lot more. Mm -hmm. Some say Google is turning into more. academia, but you know, that's a whole other conversation. No, but so, okay, you can get a PhD, neural nets are hot still, neural networks. Yes. Things of that nature, PhD, can, there's a lot of work right. there. Anything else? Yes, so meaning that AI will continue to develop, and now AI is the real thing compared to 15 years, 20 years ago, right? It were all very limited to academia. Um, that's going to continue to develop, and then you look at other areas, right? For example, digital advertising. And in the past four or five years, it was program, programmatic advertising in that how do you accurately target the audience and then maximize the CPA or CPM, right, per audience. And the next level is about how do you build a, you know, advertising network that's effective and targeting the audience and not only maximizing the revenue, but also how do you, you know, keep the audience and continue to grow the audience. Yeah. Um, so these are... And the role of data, I want to give one final mm -hmm. thought on the data. The role of data in all this is the Key. center of all this. Yes. Your thoughts on the role of data and how that's going to shape because those experiences of targeting might shift around where the users are now driving yeah. the data. Yeah. Uh, matter of fact, the data is key, right? At Kika, our number one differentiation is a is large volume of training data. So with that data, we can train our deep learning algorithm, make our algorithm identify patterns and predict contacts and text, right? So that's the number one thing. And number two thing, uh, because you have the data, then 
you, you know, there are a lot of um, privacy policies that you need to watch out, making sure there's no data leaking or security mm -hmm. leak, right? Um, that potentially create bad press yeah. and also not safe for the consumers. So we're this we're talking about data. So data really is the yeah. competitive advantage. It's, and if you're a data geek out there, you have no problem getting a job. We're here with Temi Su, who's the general manager of Kika Tech headquarters in San Jose, here inside the Palo Alto Cube Studios for Cube Conversation. I'm John Furrier, thanks for watching.